Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, I'm sure you've heard by now about Israel's attack on Iran, which took place this past Saturday on October the 26th. According to the reports, Israel sent 100 fighter jets to carry out this historic attack on 20 Iranian military sites. And you might like to know that Israel was successful in destroying Iran's entire air defense system, which includes their early warning radar stations and the anti-aircraft missile batteries that protect Iran's key nuclear sites. Now, I'll remind you, it was earlier this month, on October 1st, that's when Iran launched a large-scale missile attack, which included at least 200 missiles, which were fired at Israel. And we must not forget about April the 13th when Iran attacked Israel with over 300 drones and missiles. And it's also important to remember that Iran has been engaging in this proxy war against Israel since 1985 when they first started supplying Hezbollah with all the resources they needed to accomplish their stated goal, which is found in the 1985 Manifesto. It's in the 1985 Manifesto where the leaders of Hezbollah present their primary goal, which is this, and I quote, Israel's final departure from Lebanon as a prelude to its final obliteration from existence and the liberation of venerable Jerusalem from the talons of occupation. That's right. The primary goal of Hezbollah is the final obliteration of Israel from existence. And it was at that point in time in 1985 when Iran started uh, supporting this stated goal of Hezbollah by supplying them with substantial amounts of money and weapons and explosives and organizational aid while simultaneously persu persuading Hezbollah to move forward with their goal. To sum it up simply, Iran has been waging a proxy war against Israel for nearly 40 years now. And it was two weeks ago, on October the 19th, that's when Hezbollah used Iranian resources in an attempted assassination of Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now, as we consider the way that the leaders of Iran have been helping Hezbollah to accomplish their primary purpose, we shouldn't be surprised by the news that Israel decided to attack Iran this past Saturday. At the same time, we shouldn't be surprised to learn that the Biden-Harris administration was quick to leak the intel about Saturday's attack. Here's how Dr. Aaron Lerner explains it in his article titled, We Simply Can't Afford to Give the Biden Team Another Heads Up. In this article, Dr. Lerner declares this, and I quote, First, they leaked top-secret intelligence to interfere with the Jewish state's execution of an attack on Iran. Bad enough. Saturday morning, the Biden team risked the lives of our pilots by revealing our targets mid-operation. It was reported that we gave the Biden team a heads-up six hours before the attack on Iran. As soon as we started, Biden's people began calling reporters. An American official with knowledge of Israel's plan told the Washington Post, while much of the operation was still underway, that missile manufacturing facilities were the targets. That's right, the Biden-Harris administration couldn't wait to leak this information to the press. And in this way, they risked the lives of the Israeli pilots who were sent to strike those Iranian targets. That being the case, Dr. Lerner went on to insist this, and I quote him again, we simply can't afford to give the Biden team another heads up. At best, to avoid mishaps with American jets in the region, we can provide the wrong target details. Yes, it's depressing that this is our relationship with the Biden team, but we have to play the cards we have. That's right. The IDF must realize that the Biden-Harris administration are either completely incompetent or they're playing both sides of the conflict by leaking intel in the middle of an operation. Either way, the IDF needs to stop sharing specific details about their plans uh, to attack you know, Iran and Hezbollah and Hamas and the rest. Now, as we consider the surgical nature of Saturday's strike against Iran, we should compare and contrast the difference between Iran's attack on Israel and Israel's attack on Iran. You see, when Iran attacked Israel on October the 1st, they launched 200 missiles without any concern for where those missiles might land. Whether they struck military targets or civilian centers was of no concern to the Iranians who attacked Israel. The reason why? Well, it's because their goal is to exterminate Israel. Thankfully, the incredible defense system of Israel provided the people with protection. And as we compare this to the surgical strike that Israel just carried out on Saturday... This effectively destroyed 20 Iranian military sites, all the while avoiding civilian centers. In this way, we can see how the IDF does their best to avoid civilian casualties. 
With that, I want to consider the way that Netanyahu explains this by declaring, and I quote him here, two days ago, we struck at the head of the octopus, the Iranian regime. To the people of Iran, I say, our fight is not against you, but against the tyrannical regime that oppresses you and threatens the entire region. This regime must understand a simple principle. Those who harm us will be harmed in return. This has been our guiding principle until now, and it will continue to guide us going forward. In other words, Israel is only engaging in this, attack on, in, in this attack on Iran because the Iranian Revolutionary Guards continue to attack Israel. And knowing that the current regime there in Iran will continue attacking the state of Israel, well, it's time for the IDF to demonstrate their military might uh, by, by cutting the head of the snake off. And this is the way that Joel Rosenberg recently put it when he declares this. He says, it is time for Israel to decapitate the Iranian regime. It is time to cut off the head of the snake. That's right, it's time for Israel to deal with this Iranian regime that's been funding Hezbollah for nearly 40 years now. Rosenberg also adds this, and I quote, It is time for Israel to utterly destroy Iran's nuclear facilities and annihilate the regime's capacity to build and deploy nuclear warheads and ballistic missiles capable of reaching Israel or Sunni Arab allies, Europe or the United States. It is time to dismantle Iran's oil refineries and other oil-producing infrastructure, cutting off the regime's ability to earn tens of billions in petroleum markets that fund its evil plans. Indeed, it is time to topple the Iranian regime once and for all. That's right, it's, it's time uh, for, for Israel to topple the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. It's time to bring them to their knees by targeting their nuclear facilities and their oil refineries that enable them to fund their terrorist proxies. And so while I applaud the successful strike that the IDF carried out this past Saturday, it did fall short of truly crippling the Iran, uh, Iranian regime. This is really the time for Israel to go ahead and destroy this regime before Iran can develop and launch nuclear weapons. This is the time to bring the anti-Israelites, the anti-Zionists to their knees so that their proxy groups are left uh, without any help. Uh, and, and so that their proxy groups uh, have nothing uh, from which they can attack Israel with. And, and seeing how Israel has already brought Hamas and Hezbollah to their knees, well, we shouldn't be surprised to learn that Iran is now calling for a global military coalition to rise up against Israel. As a matter of fact, it was just yesterday when Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, he declared this, and I quote, a global coalition must be formed, as well as a political co coalition, an economic coalition, and, if necessary, a military coalition against the malicious Zionist regime that is committing the most brutal war crimes today. Uh, listen, never mind the fact that the Iranian regime has been funding a proxy war against Israel for nearly 40 years now. Never mind the fact that Iran has personally attacked Israel twice this year. No, they want, they want us to believe that it's the malicious Zionist regime that dares to live in the land of their promise that is really, you know, committing all of the worst war crimes in the world right now. Listen, Iran and their proxies have promised to obliter obliterate Israel from existence, and that's what they've been trying to do uh, for, for many, many years now. They're the ones who have sworn that there will be no peace treaties. They're the ones who have sworn that there can be no two-state solution, and now they're calling for a global military coalition to help them accomplish their genocidal plans? This is ridiculous. And listen, we shouldn't be surprised by this because this is exactly what the Lord already revealed in the pages of his prophetic word. That's right. The Bible presents us with many, many prophecies about the way that the nations of the world will gather together at the end of times for the battle of Armageddon. Not only that, but we also learn how this global military coalition will end up being destroyed. And I, and I like the way that the psalmist put it in the second chapter of Psalms. Here he declares this. He asks, why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. That's right. The Lord is going to laugh at the nations who conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. And as they gather together against Israel in the last days, well, the king of kings is going to return and destroy those who try to destroy Israel. Here's how the psalmist describes this in the second half 
of the second psalm. Uh, he says, Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are the, all those who put their trust in him. Listen, those who agree to join together in this global military coalition against Israel, uh, they'll do well to repent before they're destroyed. Every person will do well to kiss the Son, meaning everybody will do well to submit to the Son of God so that they might escape the wrath of the Lamb knowing how this is all going to end with the destruction of the global military coalition uh, there in the Valley of Megiddo. I encourage every Christian that we need to get out there and share the good news about Jesus Christ so that some might be saved. And as we share the gospel message of God's grace, which is received by, by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, we can rejoice in knowing that the Holy Spirit is going to help us to go and fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.